Hello, welcome to Great Northern Cascades Division in Enskill. This is a video series that talks about JMRI, the Java Model Railroad Interface, and how it lets you do things like control your whole layout from your smartphone through the Digitrack system or NCE or whatever other DCC system that you're using. So in a previous video, we looked at some of the different options on how you can run JMRI on a computer and then looked at how we can run it on a little mini computer called a Raspberry Pi. So we downloaded the image in that previous video. We got it running on a micro SD card. In this video, we're going to look at starting up JMRI for the first time. It is going to be on a Raspberry Pi, but even if you put it on a Windows computer or a Mac computer, it will look the same. All we're going to do is look at the very basic configuration of how we can connect in the Digitrack system. I'm using a DCS 210 Plus command station, but again, this would work on NCE, on uh, ESU, on LAN, on uh, Hornby, whatever DCC system you're using. There's dozens that JMRI supports. There's probably a way you can connect it if it has a USB interface. So we're going to look at how we get that going. Uh, we're going to give it a name as well, I think. And then in the next video in this series, we'll actually then start using a smartphone to run some of these trends behind me. So thanks for watching this one. Have fun. All right, so in a previous video, we kind of talked about some of the different options with JMRI, if you were going to be installing that onto a Windows computer or a Mac computer. But the uh, previous video focused on installing it on a Raspberry Pi. So we looked at how we got an image that had been pre-built by a gentleman in the railroad community called Steve Todd. We then copied that image onto a micro SD card. And then I've come down to the Bestman, my layout, and I put that micro SD card into my Raspberry Pi, turn it on, and this is what I'm looking at. So I'm connected to this through a little remote desktop thing just to make it a little bit easier for me to be able to uh, screen record this as well. But you know, I'm, I'm actually sitting right in front of the screen and anywhere with JMRI running on the Raspberry Pi, but I'm doing this through my laptop just to make it easier to record. So if you see little, little things that are different and the screen resolution is a little bit different, that's why. But by default, what happens when JMRI starts up, and again, it might be a little bit different depending if you're running this yourself on a Windows or a Mac or a Linux machine, but at least with the image from Steve Todd and Raspberry Pi, by default, we get the JMRI system console that runs, and that kind of gives us some information as to what's happening in the background. And so as your system is running, if you do kind of feel like it's not responding properly, if you're trying to send commands and it's not responding, then this console is, is a good idea to come and check out and see what's happening. But it's also then started a Panel Pro. And so Panel Pro lets you kind of build out a, a, a computer-based panel of what your layout looks like, where the turnouts are, where signals are. You can then add in buttons to be able to throw the turnouts, throw different routes and things like that. And there's a whole bunch of other things like roster uh, for your locos and rolling stock. There was the panels one. Uh, you can also then do some operations through this as well. You can do some scripting for, okay, when the layout turns on, I want to go ahead and set a bunch of different turnouts or set a bunch of different signals. Uh, tools, if you want to start to get into like the DCC decoder programming, things like that. But we're going to start out by going down to preferences. And when this loads up, by default, I think it's going to pick Digitrax and a look on that simulator. And again, this might be a little bit different if you've manually installed GMRI onto a machine uh, that you have at home. But under connections, Digitrax, look on that simulator is, is probably one of the common defaults that it will do. Now, I've already got my DCS210 Plus command station from Digitrax plugged in via a USB cable. And so what I can come down and do in, is pick my 210 Plus USB interface. And if I had a 240, 240 plus, I could do that as well. But I'm going to go with my 210 plus, and it's going to think a little bit and found the USB port that I'm connected to. Now, command station type, what's kind of cool with JMRI, depending on your perspective, is that you can use this just as a standalone programmer. So if you wanted to, you could say, okay, all I want to be using JMRI for is for programming DCC decoders. And the rest of it, I'm going to let the Digitrax command station handle. I'm going to use my wireless throttles or plug-in throttles that I have from Digitrax. And all I want JMRI doing is giving me the ability to have a programming track. I can put some locomotives on it. And then using a computer interface and a keyboard and mouse, I can program a bunch of stuff on that. 
So you want to do that, you pick command station type as USB interface, and then that doesn't interfere with anything else that Digitrack is doing over look on that. It doesn't give you the ability to then uh, run trends using wireless throttles through GMRI and do some of the other dispatching, the operations in the panel layout, throwing different turnout, stuff like that. I, though, want to set it as an advanced command station said DCS 210 plus advanced command station and again if you're using NCE which I've used in the past up in the system manufacturer you would come in and you would pick NCE and this is going to get all kinds of confused and then you would say okay uh, NCE USB there was a little board that um, kind of sits between your NCE power cab and then we'll let it split off and then come in via USB connection. Uh, a whole bunch of other manufacturers are all set here as well. So the instructions vary a little bit and so the screen might look a little bit different, but basically you're gonna to wanna to pick your manufacturer. You're gonna pick what your system connection is. And again, GMRI has a bunch of these already set. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna pick what kind of uh, connection it is, that USB connection. And then the rest of the defaults under advanced connection settings, you can largely leave alone. What I want to do is also come under railroad NAM because it's uh, it's because it's a new connection, and I want to actually give it a railroad NAM. So we're going to go with Great Northern Cascade Division because that's where we're at. And that's pretty much, I think, all that I'm going to do for now. There are a bunch of other things you can do. Like I said, there was some of the scripting things, what happens when this first starts up, some things for my uh, roster, if I want to be doing that, uh, different profiles that I want to start and stop automatically. Um, then I'm going to come down and hit Save. So again, the resolution's a little bit different because I'm trying to record this uh, off my laptop. But otherwise, come down to Save, and then it's going to say, OK, you need to restart this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll give it a few seconds, and what we should find is then this starts back up again. We should get to see that console screen that shows up too. And on that console screen, we should then see some messages that flash by that, hey, I found this USB connection. I've connected now to the Digitrax uh, DCS210 Plus command station. And it's now started up some things as well. So we've now got Panel Pro running as well. Let's see if we move it out the way. I think it should have shown that it has connected. Yeah, so here we go. So uh, connecting on LocoNet, we're going to use USB DCS210+. Plus. Here is then our USB connection. It says, OK, we've initialized this as a LocoNet interface. This maybe is a little bit hard to see. Uh, I can't really <laughs> zoom in, uh, unfortunately. With, um, not quickly anyway, but that does now mean that we're connected. And again, it also says here down on panel proactive profile Digitrack simulator, and it says look on that using DCS210 plus USB interface um, on this weird port number. So that's really all that there is to get this connected. That's kind of as far <laughs> probably as we're going to go in this little video, and that's really as, as simple as it gets. We've now got our GMRI instance running. We've got this connected into the Digitrax command station, and we've got at least a road name set on here as well. And so that's kind of one of the advantages in my mind of using a Raspberry Pi and using that pre-built image for Steve Todd. There's really nothing else that I have to configure here. If you do this on a Windows machine or Mac computer yourself, then there are a few of the GMRI things that you have to go through to install and get some of that defaults configured. But really, that's it. This is as simple as it gets. And so what we're going to do in the next video is then show, OK, this Raspberry Pi is actually broadcasting out its own little wireless network. So what I'm able to do from my smartphone immediately now is connect in and start to run a trend directly from it because it's already got configuration into that Digitrack system. There's nothing that I've had to do. And then we can start to run some trends. So check out the GMR website if you're doing something different to Digitrax. Uh, I showed a quick option for NCE there. This is a little bit of a whirlwind, but the, the GEMRI website is pretty well documented and then explains how to do some of these configuration options. But for the most part, getting this set up and running and connected is fairly straightforward because most of it is just going to be sending commands back out to whatever DCC system you have. There's not anything that I, as the end user, am doing with Digitrax. 
all GMRI is doing is translating what you would be doing on that keypad on the throttle into something that Digitrack system understands, or NCE, or Lens, or, or whatever different system that you're using. All right, so now that we've got GMRI running on the Raspberry Pi, we've got that Digitrax DCS210 connected into it. In the next video, we're then going to pull it up on a smartphone, and we're going to start running these trends behind me. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Hopefully it makes sense. If there's any questions, let me know. I'll try and answer them. But otherwise, do check out the GMR website. I'll put a link to it down in the description. That has a whole bunch of really good documentation that explains all these different options. It explains a whole bunch of different configurations configuration options that you can do. It starts to talk a little bit more about Decoder Pro, Panel Pro, things like that. And if you're using a different uh, DCC system as well, then it gives you a little bit more of those kind of setup instructions. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Please do like, subscribe, and follow along so that you can see the other videos in the series and the rest of the construction of the layout here. Um, and uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.